Hi, amazing viewers. Welcome to Christianity over Islam with Shan Shimon. And on today's debate, hated Bible gets stormed and destroyed in Trinity debate. Let's watch this amazing video. You said the Trinity because it's like Catholic doctrine. That's what you said? Yeah, I think that that's where it came from. So are you saying because something is Catholic, it must be necessarily false? No, I think that it was brought about for a specific reason. You don't believe in the Trinity. Why? What do you believe about Jesus? Well, here it goes. What I believe, I believe that Jesus was the very first one ever. You know, he's the firstborn over all creation. What does that mean? That's what I, I... Yeah, I know what you're referring to. Colossians 1.15. What does that mean? Quoting something doesn't tell me what it means. What does it mean? Okay. First of all, I know that he was the very first one to be there. God said at one point, he said, uh, Jesus said, you know, I will declare, right? Declare what? That well, God said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. That's Psalm right? chapter 2 verse 7. And what's that referring to? Somewhere along the lines, he was the firstborn of all creation. Right? But not, hold on, and Jose, you're, you're confusing too many issues. Psalm 2-7 is referring to Jesus' enthronement. You're confusing too many issues. You're misunderstanding too many passages. Psalm 2-7, okay. which you quoted, contradicts you. And Psalm 2-7 is not referring to Jesus being begotten before creation because the New Testament quotes it in reference to Jesus' resurrection and ascension to heaven. So why are you misinterpreting it? Why are you misquoting it and applying it to Jesus supposedly being created before all creation? That's not how the New okay. Testament quotes it. You well, know where it's quoted? The, the, that's the one thing that I don't think that you are sure and neither am I. No, I am sure. That actually took place because he said, Jose, he you're not said, listening. Right? Acts 13, 32 to 33. I am sure. You're not sure. Acts 13, 32 to 33. So don't tell me I'm not sure. I just gave you scripture. In Acts 13, 32, 33. That's not that doesn't Can save we, them. Yes, it does. Can we read it? Don't argue with me because now you're debating and you're going to lose this debate. Listen more than you argue because Paul <laughs> quotes it. He does. Open it. Psalm. Hey, hold, hold on, brother. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I'll go there. Go to Acts 13, 32, 33. We tell you the good news. What God has promised our ancestors, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus as it is written in the second Psalm. You are my son. Today I have become your father. So don't tell me God, I'm not certain. I am certain because Paul says this Psalm 2 was fulfilled at the resurrection. So don't tell me I'm not certain. You're not certain because you don't know the Bible that well. No, all, no, with all wait, due respect. Hold on, hold on a second. What he says here is that he has fulfilled it, right? Mm -hmm. By raising up, rising up exactly. Jesus. Exactly. Right? Now, when he says raising up, doesn't necessarily mean when he rose him up from the dead. Yes, it does. 34 and 35. So you're wrong again. You don't know the Bible. You're embarrassing yourself. Read verses 34 and 35. I'll, I'll grant that. Say it again. You're that. going to grant that you're wrong, right? I, I will grant that this piece uh, is speaking. This point when it says today, I have begun, become your father. Think about this for a moment, right? Jesus called him his father prior to him being... This is the place where this video get more interesting. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do it to subscribe. Being raised from the dead, right? What does that got and to Psalm 2-7? What, what is happening right here is the fact that it, has, it, it does not have to do with the fact that when he was raised from the dead, that that's when he became his father. His what does that got to do with Psalm 2 verse 7? Stop changing the argument. It, it, it had nothing to do with the resurrection. Yes, it, it does. Paul just quoted it about the resurrection. You're, you don't know more than Paul. Unless you're a heretic, a son of the devil. Paul's okay. inspired. You understand, said, you understand that he calls him father, right? That has nothing to do with Psalm 2-7. You still don't get it. Because in Psalm 2-7, what's the context? See, Can you tell me the context? Okay. So you don't even know the context of Psalm 2-7. What is it about? He was telling him that God had already said to him. Okay, Jose, am I wasting my time? What is it referring to? No, go ahead. Tell uh, me. You tell me because you're quoting verses and I'm assuming you've studied the Bible. Have you not I, studied the Bible? I, I'm being honest. I, it doesn't mean that I know every single thing that i can recollect everything but you tell me what was well, the hold context on, okay you here you are attacking the trinity in a very confident manner and yet you're so ignorant of the bible this is now arrogance because for you to then say something is false means you've done your homework and so far you don't know a single lick about scripture so what gives you the right then to sit in judgment of these doctrines by brilliant men who studied the scriptures in original languages and you're an ignoramus well, when it comes to the bible in psalm 2 yet, do you ask, know the context of psalm 2 okay better yet let me ask you a question sure please okay. you know how revelation speaks about the thrones god's throne the father and jesus is throne it doesn't say thrones it says they have one throne yeah one throne each no it says one throne that belongs to both that's revelation 22 verse 1 and 3 you're again exposing your ignorance you see this is the problem i'm having with you go no, to revelation, no, go to revelation 22 verse 1 
I'm, I'm talking about Revelation 3. Okay, and Revelation 3, 21 doesn't say thrones. It says, whoever overcomes, I will give him the right to sit on my throne as I overcame and sit with my father on his throne. Sit with my father on his throne. Two separate thrones, right? No. Did you read yes, it? You Jesus says, I overcame and I sit with my father on his throne. His throne. Right. Okay, so where's the thrones plural when he's sitting with the Father on the Father's throne? Exactly. There's two thrones, right? Man, dude, you are so, blind. You really show you're demonized. What two thrones? It's my Father's throne, and I sit with him on his throne. How is it two thrones? You understand that he's saying... Yeah, oh, because right. the Father's throne, throne is Jesus' throne, and so you can call it Jesus' throne when it's the Father's throne that the Father shares in common with Jesus. Are you reading it? It's hey. in front of you. How many uh, thrones does the Father sit on? One. And what throne does Jesus sit on? When he was victorious, he sat on his father's. Okay, now go to Revelation 12, 5 for me. Okay. Where is the throne for the Holy Spirit? Very easy. I'm going to embarrass you right there. See, I know you're going to try to set yourself up. Now go to Revelation 12, 5. And I'm going to answer your question. Now I want you to tell everyone, I'm a son of Satan. I don't know the Bible. I pervert the Bible. I would never say that, brother. Well, you no, are I'm a son of Satan. You are. I'm telling you. You are. You are of the devil, but I'm going to refute you in a minute. You are a child of the devil. I pray you repent. You can be a child of God right now. Your father is the devil. I can't lie to you. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. Whose throne? To God's throne. Okay, now, you want to see where the Holy Spirit is, right? Go to John 15, 26. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. Now, where's the Father? He has a throne, of course. Okay, so he's on the throne? Yes. And where does the spirit come from, proceed from? From the Father. And so now notice your logic, but I know you're not going to get it. So if he proceeds from the Father and the Father's on the throne, that means the spirit mm -hmm. was there with the Father on the throne. So you just got refuted. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If he proceeds from the Father and the Father's on the throne, that means he comes from the throne. Yeah, can't get around it. Revelation 22, verses 1 to 3. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down to the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Okay, now, when you read throne, how many thrones were there? Two of them. Listen, dude, you are so disgustingly blind. It, it's real. I'm about to hang up on you. How many thrones? It said throne, not thrones, it's right? Throne, uh, and of the Lamb. Okay, throne, singular or thrones? No, it says one. It says singular. One, good. Okay. Now, the, right. when in verse one, the river of water came from where? From the throne of God. So the river of water of life came from the throne. Okay, now go to John 7. Go to John 7, 38 to 39. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Okay, so you see rivers of living water, right? Right. Okay, good. Because that's simply another way of saying the river of water of life. And I hope you're not right. going to argue with me. Right, right? Right. And then where did that river of water of life come from? According to Revelation 22, where did it come out from? From within them. Okay, where did it say in Revelation 22, verse 1? Where did it come out from? From the throne. Throne. You just proved the Holy Spirit's on the throne, because read verse 39. Read 39. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those believed in him were later to receive. Thank you. Right. I want you to congratulate yourself. You just proved the Holy Spirit came from the throne of God and the Lamb, so he was there with them. Good job, buddy. Yay. All right, welcome back. Hope you've learned from this amazing video. Please do it to like, subscribe, hit up the notification button, so that each time we drop our new videos, You've been notified and please do it to write in the comment section whatever thing you've learned from this amazing video as you can see in this video this guy is really confused about the bible because so many questions have asked some shaman to this guy and this guy could not even reply since he was one that brought this question but he could not reply the questions asked by him because trinity he claims to say that god the only one that is in heaven because he was the one that made the heavens and the earth and created all men that there is nothing like trinity in in the bible and some began to make it clear to him from the old testament down to the new testament where it was said that jesus is god and he never believed this statement because if the new testament is claiming that jesus is god then where he where he's his place 
in heaven and some showed him when jesus christ said he's going to heaven to sit down at the place of his words of his father and after finding that some went forward and showed him in the bible where it was said that in, that jesus christ should be leaving this earth and going to stay with his father and this guy asked a question and said then if jesus christ is going to stay with his father then why did jesus christ say he's going to pour out the spirit the holy spirit and said where is the holy spirit where is the place for the holy spirit in heaven and some began to make it clear to him in with the scriptures where some showed him in the bible that it was said that the holy spirit is coming out directly from the father where jesus christ made a statement and said there that i'll be sending the holy spirit that will teach you all truth that will guide you in all truth that i did not show you some of the things i did not tell you here on earth that means and the truth is coming directly from the father so that truth is to guide us and teach us whatever thing we we need to learn and this guy said then if the truth is coming directly from the father then where is the place for jesus to sit down? that is where god is going to sit and he said and god and sam showed him the proof that jesus will sit down at the place of the father and he said this holy spirit we're talking about so where is this holy spirit staying and Sam went forward to show them in the book of Revelation when John was having a revelation with God and said he saw a throne in heaven and water was coming out from, from the throne. So what is that throne? And Sam made it clear to him that that throne, that water coming out from the throne is the Holy Spirit. Thanks for watching this amazing video. Please do it to like, subscribe, hit up the notification button so that each time we drop our new videos, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching this amazing video.